Hi, Siddhartha Anand. Welcome to Galata Plus. Thank and you, congratulations on the highest grossing net film made in Hindi. <laughs> thank you. Thank Did you I get that right? Absolutely. <laughs> bang on. Okay. Thank you. Is there a sense of vindication? Because throughout last year, one of the things that people kept asking was, is Bollywood gone? Is it like, you know, like, I mean, because RRR was doing so well and uh, KJF was doing so well and before that Bahubali had done so well and it, it's almost like, you know, in comparison, you know, Bollywood had come, uh, the films coming from the Hindi film industry had come, even though they were putting up decent numbers, mm. in comparison, they seemed low. Mm. So, is there a small sense of vindication that, Chalo, you know, you managed to do this? Don't say small. <laughs> I think it's huge. Our film started post the pandemic, right? Okay. Rather middle, in the middle of the pandemic. So, what I believe, what I feel why films weren't doing well is because those films were made pre-pandemic. And then there was a there was a period where you're talking about Hindi films, Hindi films, right. Hindi films. Right. So there was a period where cinemas were shut, and we couldn't release our films. People weren't coming back, so there was a prolonged break uh, for our films. And those films were made pre-pandemic. There's a mindset that's changed post-pandemic. Right. There's a viewing pattern that's changed, and those films were unfortunately a victim of that change. Um, even when I was making War, there was a sense of uh, parallel cinema is the new commercial cinema in 2018, 19, right. where you had small independent films with big ideas doing much better than tentpole films till war happened. Uh, at that point in time, also I felt, oh my God, has the viewing pattern changed? But war again proved if you make a good cinematic experience film for our masses, um, and war and Pathan, in a way, which I think is my strength, I'd like to believe, is that I don't differentiate between the class and the mass audience. I try and cater to both subconsciously. It's not an effort. It's subconsciously. So I, I try and get all the quadrants uh, to enjoy my films. Right. And if you do that, the results are War and Pathan. I want to really thank you for one thing, and that's for, with War and Pathan, taking Masala Cinema seriously. Because I think for the longest time, like the Hindi film industry at least did not have too many directors that understood the, I don't know if I can call it a genre, but that flavor. Yeah. Uh, you know, when you're talking, when I'm saying, you know, the Manmohan Desai or, or Salim Javed yeah. or Subhash Kai or right. whoever it is, you know, right. they really knew right. uh, and they, their movies were classes, masses, yeah. you know, your four yep. quadrants and, and they were very Indian films, yes. you know, it's like, like yeah. uh, uh, they, they were like Desi, uh, yeah. like the dialogues were wonderful. Right. They had those little punches, punch you know, yeah. all those kinds, of, not the big punchlines, but even yeah. the, the smaller punchlines, yeah. you know, that the, the, they spoke with a certain lot punches, uh, fl uh, fl yeah. uh, flair and flavor, and you brought that back. You know, it's like, uh, like, like. Uh, so I want to, I want to talk a little more about this later. But I just have this one question now: When John Abraham is going to kill Shah Rukh Khan and he whistles "E Mere Vatan Ke Logon," <laughs> uh, how did that come about? Because it is such an ironic touch. Yeah. Uh, ki, uh, he's whistling the tune. <laughs> That is like almost like an anthem for a nation that has deserted him yeah. and that has made him the villain that he is. Yeah. Which I was t talking to Sridhar Raghavan the other day and asking, did, did, it, did it come from Shakti? Uh -huh. Because like subconsciously, you know, True. the movies that we watch, because in Shakti also, uh, Amitabh becomes the villain because his father uh, doesn't save him uh, when needed. And the Similarly. same thing happened, Similarly. a very similar thing happens yeah. here. I'm grateful that that turned out the way we wanted it to and it just turned, it, it, it's very easy for it to become spoofy. So man is whistling and walking and revealing himself. It's it's tricky, but you know you have to do it with so much conviction. Right. Ideally, we wanted to play the national anthem, <laughs> but you can't whistle it. <laughs> so that we that would be not right. Oh, so, is that a, like a no no? I I would believe so. I would believe so, and I, I understand that also. So that's wrong. So um, we found this song, and it just was so apt. So it just worked out so well, and I was I was really excited about the sequence. I guess that tune is also so apt because you know. Uh, that's that's it. Same uh, Vatan ke logo is for yeah. the martyrs who died in war, and yeah. they are all people who are fighting for the country. Yeah, and uh, that's that's kind of just became so like yeah. apt there. Yeah, but know? also yeah. he's he he is also a, a, a sort of a martyr right. uh, himself, and he died for the country. And his his issue is that the country did nothing for him. Right. So his his is his form of nationalism is a little skewed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is what uh, Pathan's character corrects him in the end. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think it's just very apt, and we are fortunate to have found a song like that, yeah. and done it with so much conviction, yeah. and uh, it just turned out great. I was very excited when this thought actually came about right, right. to use "Ame Re Vatan Ke Logo," yeah. and uh, we were toying: should he sing it or should he whistle it? And we went with the whistle, and it's just so so much swag to it. And yeah, and so much cooler, and and I liked how you. You humanized 
John because the yeah. thing is even when he talks about there's one moment where he talks about itne sare kafan something like that and then he says look sit bas logon ke naam badalte rehte hain or something like that you know yeah. it's like like he's he's coming from a place of not like i'm a bad guy who wants to kill right. everything but right. i'm a disappointed guy yeah. and and like i yeah disillusioned guy you know mm. that was really yeah. nice to it's very important to have a villain who's relatable uh in a way in a strange way joker is also a very relatable villain whether it's the way okun phoenix did it right. or uh, you had uh, heath ledger doing it yeah. so there was certain relatability and angst in them that you related with you connected with them and they are not just black they're coming from a past that may not be so apparent but you some connect with it right. uh, everybody has those dark spaces in them so if you connect with that dark space in the audience they'll understand why the villain is doing it so that you you as a filmmaker enjoy the dichotomy what the audience is going through should i go with pathan or should i go with jim he's wronged if something like this happened with me would i become like jim or should, would i stay like pathan yeah. that dichotomy i enjoy with yeah. and it batman always gives that kind of a choice to to his characters or joker gives a choice to batman yeah. uh, you know to uh, the film gives batman gives it to the viewer also what would you do in that situation, in that situation. now given the mega success of pathan now is there a clear and on a war earlier is there a clearer understanding of what the audience really wants to see on the big screen uh you know is it a kind of a hollywoodish kind of presentation but with an indian heart is that the key to making these movies i think war and pathan um obviously had that what you're saying but i wouldn't say that's the template okay if everybody starts emulating that you would never have a bahubali or a uh, baji rao mastani or a padmavat also for that matter or a gangubai uh, or a drishyam so there's no template as such right. uh, i would say um, i would i would just say that give them a community viewing experience where even a drishyam for example doesn't have those uh, tropes of a big scaled ent- entertainer and tentpole film what it does is that it engages you in a community where you are collectively feeling fear for this man and you are trying to it's always important that your 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 film is ahead of the audience whatever you're guessing is not is not what is what, what is transpiring so you're giving a community that oh, oh listen i think this is what's going to happen and it doesn't happen there's a joy in that or if you discover see i told you that there's certain community experience in that you need to give that whether they want to laugh together or they want to cry together uh i believe a film that's coming out of rani is also coming up uh, that also looks so exciting i want to go to a theater and cry together yeah yeah i want to laugh in a bhool bhulaiya together i want to cheer in a pathan together so it's about community experiences and not trying to make a formula of a hollywood style action with uh, with songs when we're talking about the really top tier heroes yeah. do you think they can afford to uh, uh escape what martin scorsese called the marvelization of cinema because they are people expect them to do a certain kind of film mm. you know like with a certain kind of scale yeah. i'm just talking about that no like tentpole a, films the tentpole films but that's inevitable i think yeah i think ho- hollywood went through that yeah um we will also eventually go through that this is just the nascent period of that we will also be a victim of that because you know the uh, um uh, the viewing experience has become exp- expensive right so you want a bank for your buck right you will have to give them large scale films where where they want whether it's ice now whether it is 4dx or there's imax 3d there is no end to it you will want to go for an experience it's go, it's going to become akin to going to an amusement park yeah. or a theme park and give them that ride if you want to make these kind of films and they need to get bigger and fortunately the success of pathan has showed that we can we are allowed to now spend a little bit more yeah. and give them a little bit more right. so that's very encouraging do you think one mega success can bring an industry back i think it can give hope okay we can still do that we can try and reach 4 crores footfalls so there's hope somewhere i think right yeah when you talk about footfalls that's a better judge of what a movie uh, has done than the actual money right because the money varies across places money varies because obviously your average uh, ticket price can vary you know it can go up or down you want to monitor how many people are coming to watch your film right, right. and that's not yet it's not seeped in yet but i think the future will be that we will count number of people that watched your film right uh, so i think that's a, a 3 crore is where you in which you which is what you call a blockbuster yeah so if you're going to go close to 3.3 3.4 that means it's increasing right. or the fact that the audience never went anywhere they were always there for you right. you just had to serve them the right dish yeah so i'm sitting in front of these posters that says 25th jan 
we're now in March. Yeah. And uh, the people are still in theatres and you're still doing, uh, yeah. you know, like... Crores like, every day. <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> so it's like slightly... Surreal, no? It's surreal, right? Like it's while I'm giving this interview, there's someone buying a ticket for Pathan right now. Yeah. So, so that's, that's beautiful, yeah. yeah this feeling yeah. is beautiful. I mean, another narrative about Pathan is that uh, it, Shah Rukh is back. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a personal theory that that stars of that magnitude never really go away. Yep. Uh, it's just a question of time or whatever it is. But, you know, one thing is, there's definitely one factor here that he was away from screen for a long time. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, the, that giving audiences a chance to miss them mm. is something that stars can do in the future to kind of make audiences anticipate their films a little more? I wouldn't call it a reason um, because we know of a lot of other actors who took that break in the pandemic, uh, albeit naturally. Yeah. But the films didn't open and didn't do well at sure. all. No, 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 I'm not saying that's why Pathan worked. No, no, I'm coming to that. I'm coming to that. What has happened today is that with the advent of social media penetrating into every house, into everyone who's got a smartphone, um, you're seeing a lot of them anyway, and you're, you're seeing them free of cost. And you're seeing the idea is that you should not see them do what they do on screen free on your phone every day. Right. The novelty will go away. So what we need to do is actually cut the social media chatter more than anything else. Is try and just come to the screen. I don't think Tom Cruise does any advertisements also. If, uh, or doesn't do any endorsements also, if I'm not mistaken, is what I'd read somewhere. So only way to see me is when you pay money. But you can come twice a year also, thrice a year also. That's not, that's not that's the not issue. Better. But just pay for me and come. Right. Don't see me free doing things and appearances and doing dance videos on reels and stuff like that. So I will not enjoy that on screen. Why should I pay when I can see you free? Right. So um, you retain the sanctity of being a star. Right. A star is someone who's unattainable, who's aspirational. If I keep seeing when I open my phone, you start them somewhere. This sense of diminished. Like if I see you in your kitchen and if I see you in your Doing, whatever. In your whatever. reality. So it's certain diminished. So there's a certain uh, quality of I don't know my star. So I adore him. Right. So if I know everything, how he wakes up, this is his bedroom, oh, this is his bathroom, this is where he sleeps, this is his cupboard, these are his clothes. So it's, it's an enigma that mysterious quality is gone. Yeah, so and the mystique goes away. The mystique goes away. Is a big star necessary for a franchise? Uh, for example, all the franchise movies that have been made in India so far, uh, whether you're talking about in the, in the, you know, like Tiger, the Tiger film set Salman. Yeah. At least the, the, the beginning of war and, you know, they're not yeah. yet franchises, but yeah. they are, I'm hoping that they will be. Uh, Pathan is, you know, you have to think you have Shah Rukh and yeah, Pathan. Yeah. So, uh, and, and down south, you have, uh, you know, Vijay in Lokesh Kanakaraj's films, yes. which is like, which is called the LCU, right. the Lokesh Cinematic Universe, because right. they are also doing a lot of like crossovers okay. between characters and things like that. But when you take Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. was a character actor when he started that. Yeah. Uh, before that, his best known films were Chaplin yeah. and uh, Zodiac. Really? Uh, he was not really a star star. Mainstream hero. He was not really a mainstream hero. You're right. So, Iron Man just transformed him yeah. and made him this, you know, yeah. Huge uh, yeah. star. Yeah. yeah. But do you think that people would co come to see that in India or do they expect only the top level? Herein lies the difference between Hollywood and our film industry. Right. You know, we can't put up films, a tentpole films without a big star. Because primarily our audience first comes in to see the star. And then the film that he's in, we have to accept that first. Right. But in Hollywood, you can end up making a Jurassic Park with a Sam Neill. You don't need a Tom Cruise or a Tom Hanks in Jurassic Park, which is directed by Steven Spielberg. Because the hero of the film is the dinosaur, yeah. is a creature. You can make Jaws with a rel relatively unknown mainstream actor, because that, the creature is the hero. The shark, the environment is, uh, the drama is. So what happens is, but we can't do that. For us, even to support a budget of a Jurassic Park, we will need Amir Shah Rukh and Salman to come together <laughs> to support that budget. So it, it is star driven our industry. So unfortunately, yes, we for tentpole films, we will need that support and that's the naked truth. So I'm really happy about the numbers and all that. But I have a, a kind of a flip side question to this, which Oops. is that apart from the initial flurry of reviews that talk about the film's pros, cons, whatever, about the film's content, after that initial, you know, one, two, three day period, it becomes all about the numbers. numbers. And which is important to you, which is important to Yashraj, which is important to the industry. Of course. But now it's become like, like, 
you know the day by day collection is being reported to the audiences to the public i mean like really? when did this transition happen and why is it important for why is everybody so obsessed with numbers it's been, it's very strange i mean people actually the common people who i meet they talk about numbers is done so much and i really didn't know that number i'm saying oh today's become this much because i'm shooting fighters when they come and tell me your film did this much i'm like wow yeah it's social media the reach you see the penetration of it so they want to know now they want to know more about bollywood they want to know more about the films and the film stars and what the film are doing they feel everyone is actually a critic now everyone you know in whatsapp groups of uncles they have reviews <laughs> of films so everyone likes that kind of engagement so it shows how big and important films are to our audiences and uh, what uh, uh, what that is their only outlet of entertainment so they want to be more engaged with it and numbers have become that oh i know how much this film has done I mean, I was at an air base shooting two days back, and uh, air, the officers' wives came and told me, "Oh, congratulations! The film has done thousand crores plus." <laughs> like, wow, yeah. It's so, and it's it's fun. I mean, it's great that you know everybody's aware of it. But the downside is that when you're not doing well, they know that also that your film has not done well and it's corrected only forty crores. Right. For example. You know, you're saying that yes, this is the primary source of entertainment, engagement, whatever it is, but people don't seem to be interested in knowing more about the art of cinema. Yeah. It's more about the commerce of cinema. That's what I'm a little. If you're making a film and releasing it in the theaters, you're doing it for the business. For the okay. So I think the good and bad is. There is some art in it. Uh, there is an art in it, but you know the line is drawn now, Bardwaj. Where art films you won't be able to put out in the theaters. They won't cover the no, cost no, no, of PNA. No, no, no. Art films, but there? there is art in your film. It's like the like we were just talking about. But the they. Hey, my brother, ke logo. You know, there's some, there's some. They don't talk about that. So I have a point to that. What happened is that I think Pathan also initially, initially got so much love. What I loved was, hey man, I loved the film. Wow, what a film! That was when the numbers were still pouring in. Right. The fact that they loved the film, they didn't say, oh, listen, that sequence was good. Oh, I loved, I loved Jim's track, and I loved his sense of nationalism and pride. Tonality, they loved the film. That means the art is appreciated, and a bad film cannot do numbers. So it's somewhere proportionate. I want to talk about your sensibilities. Uh, you have identified yourself as a commercial filmmaker, yep. and you talk a lot about the audience. Even when we look at your family, uh, there's Indraj Anand yep. who worked with Raj Kapoor right from the very beginning. beginning. Uh, you know, that's that's a huge phase of cinema, and he was writing Ek Dujhe Ke Liye, Shansha. You know, like like you know, right yeah. till the eighties. Yeah. You know, like Shansha and all that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, Shansha is a bit of a family movie for you because yeah, yeah, yeah. that yeah, was, was directed by you know, and, uh, produced you know, by the father. Yeah, yeah. So that yeah. was like a like I'm, I'm sure you all like yeah, grew up with like a very <laughs> memorable film for you. Yes. Uh, and then there's Mukul Asanand, who yes. uh, was one of the first people, along with you know, uh, like this bunch of eighties directors yeah. who. Brought a Hollywood sensibility to uh, yes. like uh, like Indian, Indian movies, which is like trying to do an epic kind of you yeah. know the the, the scale the, they brought the lenses in. became wider the lenses, yeah. you know you know the, the yeah. everything was looking a little larger than life. Yep. Uh, so has this mix kind of affected you in any way? Um, genetically, must have. <laughs> I can't pinpoint to it. But your sense of uh, all of them had a sense of commerce right. in them. Which I think I've imbibed, and uh, I have to thank them for the genes. Uh, so somewhere to belief and the conviction in commercial cinema, and believing in the punchlines and the heroism and the drama and and the music and like you said, the lensing and the big scale, big screen experience is uh, somewhere inherited, I guess. So do you remember watching something like Khuda Gawar? I mean, in awe, yeah. As a child, yeah. Uh, I mean, I remember seeing the trial of Hum, and I was just blown by it. And uh, with the with the show. audacity of uh, com commercial cinema yeah i mean uh, uh, it's just, it's just something that whether it's a i saw some rushes of dust when it was being shot uh, there were some amazing chopper shots with trucks in nevada and in i mean in 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 the in west america um, it just it just had some he had a vision and uh, unfortunately we couldn't see the end of that but um, but yeah so that's inherited i guess you had a slightly schizophrenic career Where you started writing Hum Tum, and then you started making uh, films with Salam Namaste yeah. until Anjana Jani B C One Siddharth Banerjee, yeah. who's doing romantic comedies slash romantic dramas. dramas. Yeah. Let's first stick there. Okay, let's dissect like that. Like yeah, like 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 yeah. when asked to do movies initially, you jumped into this zone. Mm -hmm. 
because that was your sensibility i think it's the period i think there was a period where where only those films those kind of films were being made a uh, slice of life films and uh, um you know we had actors who were uh, who were boys um so whether it's a safe um you know you write for him uh, a guy who is uh, still uh, trying to find his adulthood and uh, who's a commitment for big guy so it was a lot of very boyish i was also a young kid um and those those were films actually that were running around us at that point and i was prevalent and that became my sensibility at that point and uh, hum tum i accidentally became a writer actually it was script by kunal it was kunal's script and i was an ad on that film right. and i happened to just give some suggestions on a couple of scenes and very gracious of uh, kunal and adi to give me the credit um, of a co-screenplay writer very gracious of them but it is kunal's film uh, hum tum and i was the associate director on that also so i got a lot of hands on experience on closely working on a film right. in which adi realized that i could be a filmmaker and then he thrusted upon me the responsibility to become a director and said go and write a film and i wrote i wrote down an idea that you know that came from experiences nearby and so it became a slice of life kind of a film and um, there on it just led to those kind of films with save that we had discussions and i always wanted to push it a little bit that is why my next film was sort of an action film in tararampa there was car racing there was lots of car crashes and lot of action that way and with car chases so i probably had that streak in me uh, initially as well and um, but i was just i was like a factory at that point in time just finishing a film writing another one till a break came in after anjana anjani there was a pause when anjana anjani didn't do as well as it was expected to do is when i started reassessing and i realized that i may not have anything else to tell in that genre okay i probably was exhausted of conflicts just let me break here then just take you back to that a bit because but while you were in the genre hmm. you were having a good time as in it was coming I to loved you it. okay right i loved it right. it was not like i loved you it. know i'm being forced to do no, this no no, no. i loved right. it 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 the stories came from me came from within but post anjana jani there was a sense of exhaustion because i had done that and i'm somebody who just have i have an attention disorder so if i did that for 6 years i have thing was done with it and that's when i realized that i don't have anything else to tell in the genre i don't have a conflict between a boy and girl i don't know what else can there be uh why won't they get together <laughs> what's stopping them and that's when uh, uh night and day came up the remake of night and day came to me and um, yeah, i think that was that film was just a catalyst to me actually finding my voice it was just the catalyst and it was it was a film that came came to me um which i which i got so joy and suresh nair to write it for me and enjoyed that process of writing action and uh, um i felt oh this is nice yeah so we have an action sequence what else can we do in it so i started enjoying that like a boy and we had fun making it with rithik then rithik and me struck a great rapport and um there and we started developing lots of ideas in fact in between war and bang bang there were so many films i was making <laughs> with rithik and without him in the action space and eventually i think i'm just a destiny's child that just every path has led me to this so basically you're saying i make movies for a commercial audience mm-hmm. i also make romantic mo- films i also make i'm a storyteller so you don't you don't think yourself as being better at one or the other it's like everything's the same i don't think i've tried everything yet uh, bhagwaj i'm i'm dying to make a courtroom film like like rainmaker is one of my all time favorite films um i have seen that film i've seen the making of that film i've read it i've read read the book i've read i mean i I'm, i'm a sucker i'm a sucker for john grisham novels i in fact one day reached out to john grisham to say can you write a courtroom film for me this is about 8 9 years ago and he says i write books i can you can buy one of my books you actually reached out i reached out to john grisham right. i'm a sucker for courtroom dramas so i'm a storyteller so you give me a story that engages me i would tell it in its best form of my ability so was there any uh hesitation in the jump between this romantic phase of yours to bang bang which is your first action film. action film like full on action film uh was there any were there any doubts was there any like can i pull this off you know was there any bit of that it's very strange because i had that okay. you know the thing is that bhardwaj in my entire career till bang bang run up to bang bang i i hadn't had a shot where could, there someone gets slapped i didn't know how to cover a slap <laughs> did someone actually slap somebody how do you do it how do you know how to just brush past the nose and react to it and how do you cover it i had no idea i learned on the go 
and uh, so those were my initial hiccups and I didn't know what squibs were. I had heard the word squib for the first time and I was on set. Oh, there are squibs under sand. So I'm like, what is that? <laughs> so it was just on the go and I realized, that, oh my God, I'm liking this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm enjoying this process. So then I just deep dived into the, the genre and... Made it yours. And yeah, made it mine. Yeah. Also, it was nascent. I don't think people were making action films when I did that. So even now, I think the only action film that I can think of are these films. Yeah. Uh, on, your finger trip, uh, on your fingertips. Yeah. The action films that are made in, in Hindi. So um, the, it, it's still an unexplored genre. You know, one of the high points of whether it's uh, war or Pathan has been the action. Uh, and you've gotten people from abroad to do it. And in fact, with Pathan, I think you had this person who choreographed one of the Mission Impossible films. Yeah, and Casey. Casey, Casey yeah. Neal. And, and something with Spielberg as well? Uh, worked Casey Neal's worked a lot with Tom Cruise. Lots, lots of Tom Cruise, Tom yeah. Cruise. So, uh, you know, why is it that, uh, and of course there are exceptions. Uh, for example, Rajamali's films, you know, have great action and they're by Indian choreographers. Yep. But in general, why are action choreographers in India uh, unable to come up with massive set pieces? Is it because of the budget? Uh, is it because they're trained to do Disham Disham and they can't think beyond that? Uh, they only do those wire stunts kind of thing? What is it? I wouldn't say so. I think it's, it's a lot to do with experience. Because like I said, action films are really unexplored here, Bhardwaj. And I mean it, if you go look back at it and tell me which are the action films that are made in India in the last 20 years. So, uh, I love it. So that action, now, that action they specialize in. Hollywood can't do that. So if you want this kind of action like War and Pathan and Bang Bang, we don't have technicians who probably have the rigs to do it for safety or the ability to shoot it. Right. Covering action also is an art. Yeah. I can have an action sequence in this in this room, but how do you cover it intricately and effectively? Right. That is something that we have not yet learned. We are at a nascent stage, maybe 10 years down the line, we won't need anyone from Hollywood. Right. We would have learned it, we would have learned to make the rigs and get the safety absolutely bang on for, for, for the actors. So we need to bring in bring them in with their technique, with their rigs, with their harnesses. And we learn, we keep them back. That's what we've done and all my action directors have done that. They've bought off the rigs from those people who came and brought, brought them here for our films. So we are getting there. And this is just the transition process is what I call it. Right. But, but the imagination of that action, that was all yours. No, so that is collaborative. That is something that... With the action... With everybody, with Adi, with uh, with my team, with my ADs, uh, we all we all collaborate. We bounce. Uh, okay, this is the thing. He has to run from here, from point A to point B, for example. Whether it is his bike chase that you're seeing that is in Siberia. Okay, it's a lab, and he has to get away, and he has to lose one orb, and has to get retrieve one. How do you do it? You can do anything. Right. So it's even the saving the scientists in Dubai. Where is he doing it? Let's do it in Dubai. Where do we do it in Dubai? Dubai, which is the most gorgeous looking location, the Burj Khalifa. So let's do it around the boulevard, but it's impossible. No, let's make it happen. That gives the scale. Okay, let's do it with above uh, hummers and with two choppers and tying them up with a tether. So these are imaginative ideas to scale it up, to give that experience. Right, right. So it's all collaborative. Somebody can come up with any idea and we are, yeah. No, you can't do it alone. In the romantic phase of yours, do you have a favorite film? Of my own film? I think Salam Namaste is. That's, um, that's I, I think that's that's a really fun film. Yeah, when I look back at it, it's so real, it's so tangible uh, in its emotion, in its uh, the in, in its conflict and its reaction. It's like my best moment to itself is that when she uh, uh, when she doesn't do the abortion, and he says, "What the fuck do we do?" He says, "Oh fuck it, let's get married." So it's like she says, "You want to get married to me because you love me or because of the kid?" He says, "Yeah, because you have a kid, we have to get married." She says, "Now I will not get married to you." Because you want to get married for the wrong reasons. It's so real. Yeah. Because if that boy would say that, if you have the baby, let's get married. Yeah. And it's so relevant even today. So I love the, those moments uh, that we created in Salam Namaste. Actually, I'm remembering this moment where he drinks milk in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, on the pot. <laughs> on the pot. That's yeah. safe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's all very real, yeah. And it's something that's so tangible. I just love that film for, for that reason, yeah. And, and safe that who wakes up in the morning and says, I'm in the car. He says, I called you on the landline. <laughs> so those things and Seth is like that. So it's very, it's from experiences. Let's talk about, like we talked about how you got into Bang Bang. Now let's talk about war. And at, at that point when war was happening, it was not meant to be part of a franchise or whatever. No. Right. So it was just supposed to be a standalone action film. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But at what point did the franchise talk begin? So obviously when we were making war, we had no idea of that. It's after war completed, 
is when we realize that okay we if this film works we'll have another agent and you already have an agent in uh, in tiger why don't we create more such opportunities and then we can make a universe i think it's natural transition so um, that came about after we saw the film after we saw war right but while making it there was no plan no there was no discussion right right we were just trying to save our own film <laughs> let's make a film that works okay. both your recent films that war and uh, pathan uh, pathan and strangely one pre pandemic hit and one post pandemic hit i really love the the i mean like this interaction between you and your writer shridhar raghavan and your dialogue writer abbas uh, abbas tarwala because you guys really get once again i'm saying this masala mm-hmm. that flavor you know it's like uh, you know ab shaitan se dosti karni padegi that kind of uh, you know that that uh, right. language that language but not using it like a like a wink wink way You're using mm-hmm. it with dead serious earnestness yeah. you know like because of your the word that you use i think was conviction yeah. because your your saying i know this line can kind of, it's a little over the top yeah. but i'm going to play it seriously mm. because that's the nature of the genre or yeah. like that's the nature of this kind of film yeah. so like i said you know you know there are echoes of all these earlier mm. uh, films like like from manmohan desa selling mm. javed like yeah. we talked about chakti yeah. uh, when i say manmohan desa i mean this this classic touch of sharuk not having religion mm. like he's he's amar yeah. he's akbar and, and anthony so he's yeah. like everything you yeah. know because he doesn't have he's this religion is probably that of cinema Absolutely. he's like you know he's born in that yeah, yeah, yeah. he's born he's found in a the theater theater <laughs> How did you guys jam? I mean, like, I'm really curious about this because it's like, uh, you know, yes, you happen. Whole, it starts here. There's this agent. This happens. It happens. But I'm talking about sculpting these micro moments. You know, it's like, how do I? How does that flavor? You know, how how does it? Because in today's age, like again, I said, there are very few filmmakers who kind of have that a interest on and b the ability to get mm-hmm. into that zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk about that a bit. It's also uh the synergy that abbas uh, shridhar adi and me it's four of us it's not just three of us um adi is a huge factor in in both these films um so it's four of us um having the same belief system uh, bhardwaj and uh the same films that we have adored grown up grown up on and and believed in and the cinema uh, that we believe in um it's we share that we say, share the same sentiment so the fact that if he doesn't have a name and that he's found in a theater that actually was called navrang which got edited out uh, which we might see it in the ott version um the thing is that we all none of us looks down upon it right no one says no that's cheesy we all come in with oh yeah that's a great idea oh uh, that, and then he was and then he became pathan because of this reason and now he has no religion it's only his country yeah. that matters to him yeah so it's it's a synergy of like minded people who give confidence to each other that listen what you're doing is right so we give that faith something sometimes i may not believe in where where uh, abbas convinces me that go ahead with it this this do it abbas taught me one thing is that if if which i which i should question him at some point in war uh, he also wrote bang bang with me he wrote salam namaste so abbas and me go a long way he told me if 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 your drama holds people will not look for logic right so there's some some learnings everywhere so there's a there's a there's a, a symbiosis of minds that we thrive on right and 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 we come up with elements that actually are part of us and the audience together right and we are unashamed about it right right so we can do it with conviction and believe it we believe it and we do it with conviction you will buy into it right that's 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 something that we are not going to lose touch with so you have to just first believe in it right, right. yourself yeah. and not say okay let me try it yeah so now what happens is people watching pathan say let me also try it it's a little shaky so you will not know if that moment has worked or everything leading to that moment has allowed that moment to happen yeah yeah that's a good point yeah, yeah. so it's not in isolation yeah yeah so it's the gene of and the dna of the film that allows it yeah yeah so that is something you need a symbiosis of energies in the film and through the film that needs to be consistent it can't just pop up yeah. once and say oh yeah yeah let me do this it will become a clap trap no it needs to run in the dna right right so it's like the first line when when that guy says that kisi khoobsurat khatoon ka instagram nahi hai ye cancer hai so you know the tone of the film is set from there yeah. and that is the pakistani general saying that yeah. Yeah. so you're you're in okay 
सो यू सेट दीज थिंग्स सो दैट पार्टी पठान के घर पर रहोगे तो मेहमान नवाजी के लिए तो पठान तो लाए आएगा और पटाखे भी लाएगा दैट्स इन द एंड सो देर इज सिनर्जी इन द बिगिनिंग एंड एंड ऑफ द फिल्म ऑफ लाइन राइट राइट दैट्सिंग इज ऑर्गेनिकॉर्ट that look with sony raja yeah, and just know, a nod just a nod and and it's like it's it's so much it's, it's a, there's a whole it's history so there because you know then you know what happened yeah. you know with the with the yeah. thing and he turns out to be a kind of father figure for the father that he's killed yeah. uh, you kid. know for the for the kid yeah. so uh, i mean these are just the like, like these are just yeah. amazing touches in yeah. what could have just been a a bang bang movie yeah. Yeah. like a general exactly. action movie but then that's tone which chosen for war and bang bang is a tone i've chosen right. to be an action comedy right, right. and a little uh, uh, um, frivolous in the sense to just come and have fun yeah yeah i've chosen that for bang bang and i've realized that that somewhere in india is still people are trying to grasp that rush hour kind of a kind of a film and in that you still need to have a villain that's believable everything else will fall into place that's my learning from bang bang the villain also shouldn't be like that who is who's not tangible right in that film everything else would have worked right like true lies right. for example yeah. true lies worked but the villain was in the tone of the film but believable yeah 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 so everything else worked in its landscape now we talked about the action choreographer kesi on you yeah. and uh, he said something very interesting about shahrukh he said he unlearned and then learned how to do stunts how does one unlearn <laughs> how to do stunts I'm, i'm not sure if you know what he meant but i'm just asking i'll try and try and second guess it um because i think uh it's it it probably had been a long time since sharukh did those kind of action films right and there was a certain technique that the indian action directors had taught him right for reacting and hitting or jumping or rising is what kc said let's do it in a different style right maybe that's what he meant and i think kc also probably must be repeating what sharukh must have told him right. that i had to unlearn oh this is the right way right. or this is the relevant way to do it so let me unlearn that and sharukh is a great learner and a very avid learner right he wants to learn he wants to wants to listen he's a great listener and a speaker and orator everything <laughs> so yeah so he probably meant that is what i would try try to how is life at the summit right now i mean is it scary i, I know you're happy at some <laughs> at some level but is it also like this oh my god how i would it be scary it's not It's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing that the it's fact not scary that at all. It's like, oh my God, what if you know this doesn't last? That's 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 not there at all. I mean, it doesn't last is is something that this wasn't in my control and that also is not in my control. So why spoil the moment? Destiny child, you say. I'm I'm destiny's child. I would say that again. I've always said it, and uh, I think God's brought me here and He'll handhold me through it. Yeah, I think. And I'm 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 I haven't changed in my filmmaking actually. The way I'm actually even even the the my style of. of conducting myself and my film and uh, the way i'm doing it in fighter is probably the same it was as it was in salam namaste right i haven't changed that that has not changed and uh, i'm still fearful of of each day of shoot okay and still uncertain if something will work it's not that okay now i know how to make action films just leave it to me guys please i know what i'm doing that's not me right. that's never been me i'm 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 like people are telling me oh you're a master of the genre i say no i'm a student of the genre so i'm i'm still learning i'm still taking suggestions from everybody around me and taking baby steps even in fighter though all the fighter is is a film that is really incredulous is what i would call it so i'm 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 a student there i'm also learning i'm i'm a little nervous so that's keeping me on the edge and keeping me uh, in check what kind of film is fighter is it also in this this genre or is it like like uh, a pure action film or you know the the, the thing in, like uh, talking about conviction so uh, it's too early but i'll just put it in perspective uh, fighter is, is an action film uh, but it's set in the indian air force it's a very uh, uh, authentic air force film uh, it's collaborative with the indian air force and um, so i have to be very very correct and authentic in everything in the way they conduct themselves in the way they speak uh, um, so within that within that film uh, in that action film i have five songs wow i have five songs in fighter apart from that the the point that i'm coming to is i have something which no action film in india has which is a sad song i have a, i have a sad song a sad song a complete full song in the film which is a sad song and i was there pointing it out to my team two days back and rithik that do you know that you realize that and they were like oh shit yeah wow 
oh yeah, action films don't have that. I said, that is what I think we are, what we're doing is we're doing it with conviction. You didn't realize it, but you gave the shot. Right. With full conviction, but you realize the landscape of the film is an action film. Right. And we have a sad song because you have to do it like that line, what, what line you're saying, what dialogues you're saying. You have to do it with conviction. Whether it's a whistle of Emery Vatan Ke Logo and your helmet coming off, a guy wearing a helmet in the middle of Dubai with a, uh, uh, with a bazooka and opening it whistling Hey Mere Vatan Ke Logo, you all have not point, pointed out to that but rather enjoyed it and clapped at it. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, that's an extension, uh, the sad song in fact is an extension because you will not realize it, you will feel for the characters when it comes in. Was there a, given that you go to so many locations and you have Shah Rukh and Deepika and all that, was there a temptation to have maybe one or two more songs in? Uh, always, I had a temptation of having a Tiger Shroff song in, uh, in a war. Then why doesn't Tiger Shroff introduce himself in the film in a song? Why is he oh, coming in? That's a great introduction with that exactly. single shot. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So you have the, you have the, these temptations all the time, but then you have to go back to what excited you about the film and the script. Don't mess with that. But what happened was that by the time we started shooting a war, Tiger became a big star. Right. He had just delivered a massive blockbuster. And he was a huge star, a dancing star, action star. So he said, yeah, let's have a song. So we always had that discussion, let's do it, let's do it. But then we went back to the script and said, this script is a sacrosanct. Don't mess it with, mess with it, even if it takes two years to make it and trends change. Don't try and retrofit things into that film, into the script. Right. Stay true to it. That's what we did and that's what happened in Pathan also. There was no space for any song. Your DP says, good films make your life better. Oh! <laughs> where is that picture from? Oh, where is that picture from? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I forgot about it. You know, you know, in your DP, you don't see your own DP, so you don't realize it. Right. It's time to change. <laughs> what What is a good film for you? What is a good film? A good film for me is um, a film that that you're not tired at the end of it after watching it. You okay. feel you still are fresh enough because you you've got engaged. You either cried and you you felt full. You felt full because uh, you when when you go into a theater, lights dim out means you've been brought into another world. You've transcended into it, come out of it, still with the same energy. Right. And if you're like coming out like this, it's not worked. So you want to come out the way you went in. Right. That's a good film. So can you give me, like, just like a wrap-up question, can you give me some of the, what you would consider good films? What my good films are? Oh, tricky, tricky. Uh, tricky from here or? Basically, wherever. What's a good film? What um, are some of your good films? Like your go to good films like like for example a nayakan is a great film okay. like nayakan is something which uh, uh, from the performances and its music i consider that a great film i love subhash gai films i love i consider meri jung a good film right i consider ram a oh good film oh my god film. i still remember that scene where anil kapoor drinks poison oh the, the, his introduction scene yeah, 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 yeah. it's like it's it's, it's actually a... look at the conviction of this yeah. <laughs> the conviction of the filmmaker yeah, yeah so I, I mean it's varied yeah it's uh, it's varied varies for me from time to time right and yeah. actually you know speaking of masala and and conviction uh, you you mentioned subhash guy and and i'm talking about i'm thinking about karma where Dilip Kumar actually draws the map of India with bullets from a machine gun around uh, around the Anupam Anupam Kher, Dr. Anupam Dang. Kher, Dr. Dang. Incredible. And do you, do, you, do, you, do, you, do you imagine, do you remember the kind of uh, acclaim and claps he got in the theatre? The theatre just erupted. You know, erupted. Like, like the map of India in yeah. bullets Can you imagine? The I just love it. I'm getting good from thinking of it. I'm that filmmaker. I'm that audience. Yeah. I love it. I love this cinema. Yeah, so this is great cinema. Yeah, so <laughs> for me. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so that was a real pleasure talking to you. Ed. Thank you, Badwash, for having me. Yeah, thank you. Experience ten days of Grand Europe trip for easy EMI of rupees twenty five thousand only with GT Holidays, South India's number one travel brand. Wonder Diamond, South India's largest lab-grown diamond brand, stores at Chennai, Coimbatore, Bangalore, and Hyderabad.